Hello and welcome to the beautiful Wastwater in the Lake District. In this film, I'm following on from my film about sketching and drawing to the next stage of making my reduction lino cuts, which is creating the design drawing. So here we have this amazing landscape and I am about to turn it into a reduction lino cut. You can see me using a ruler there, that's to establish straight lines for the edge of the water. I always do that with drawings to make sure my horizons and water lines are straight. So in this film, I'm working up an idea that I have had for a long time. We took these photographs and I did some drawings of wasp water pre-pandemic. So this has been a long time in the sort of developing stage and that's true of a lot of my work. There's often two or three years while I sort of think about what I want to do. So you can see me here working out the drawing stage and it's very much a question of feeling my way. So if you watch I'm dotting back and forth. Now, I really like the um, shape I've got at the top of the page, that hillside with the little gully, but I'm not sure what I want to do at the base of this hill. So you're going to see an awful lot of editing and correcting. And my drawings are always sort of semi-destroyed by the time I finish with them, which is why nobody would ever want to buy one. That was me again just checking that things are level and when I do a design drawing like that this this is the size the print will be and this is what I will use to transfer to the lino itself now you you see here I'm moving the drawing across I don't like um, the framing and I've just adjusted it so there are times when I will stick extra bits of paper onto the drawing or I'll chop bits off depending um, on how it's developing and that was me moving it over. What I'm looking for here is a way to describe this particular landscape. So I want a sort of authentic way of giving the viewer that landscape but I I'm not looking for a literal uh, depiction of the landscape. So it's not going to look like the real place, like a photograph would, for example. What I want is the sort of atmosphere um, of the place. And I'm trying to find a way at the moment of describing those rocks and land masses. So I never have a sort of set way of drawing things. I try and find my way of saying each particular landscape as I'm working it out. One of the things that I feel very strongly about landscape is that I like to treat it like I was doing a life drawing of perhaps a wild animal or something and I like my landscapes to feel like they could get up and walk off at any moment. I like the sort of muscularity of the hills and the rocks and things like that. So um, for me it's almost like a sort of life drawing this. And here I am just sketching in where the gravel is falling at the end of that drawing, just working out where the, the gravel spills are actually going to lie. So this is the second stage where I am making a tracing. Now I always use a plastic tracing film rather than tracing paper 
this is stuff called polydraw that I'm using here. And that's because I'm not just making a straight tracing. This is the next stage in the editing and refining process of my drawing. So I've got the fundamentals down in the drawing on paper. And then when I come to do the tracing, I am refining and changing things. During this little bit of film, you'll see me um, put a little patch of paper under the bottom corner on the left hand side um, to completely redraw an area. I'll, I'll point that out to you when it happens. And that often happens with tracings. It's my opportunity to, to resolve things. So there is a constant amount of editing and revision going on um, at the drawing stage, at the tracing stage, at the stage where I transfer the tracing onto the lino, and then at the cutting stage because I may not go entirely with the drawing on the lino either. So everything is in change here. Everything is up for alteration and change depending on how I feel about the picture as it develops. And I much prefer that approach to lino cut where it's um, a process in motion rather than me following a set plan. So this plastic film, I, I do recommend it. It's very robust and it means I can sort of alter things a lot. Here, this is the bit that I don't like. And um, I can see as I watch myself, I'm not happy with this. And there's a lot of rubbing out and correcting going on. And that poor tracing film has to stand up to all that. There you go. There, I'm redrawing it now. I've got an idea of what I want and now I've got it how I want it. So here I am now um, in the final stage of transferring to the lino. I'm using carbon paper. That blue sheet you can see there is um, it's actually a double sided carbon um, that I use. And that's a nice thick carbon paper. And it's going to transfer to the lino. And I use traditional grey artist's lino that I usually stain pink. And the carbon paper will stay on the lino throughout the reduction process. So throughout all the various layers of inking and cleaning off the ink. Um, I use oil-based ink, so I will be cleaning with white spirit. And the carbon will stay on the lino through all that, provided it has time to set. Carbon takes time to fix itself and to set. So if you are using carbon, it's a good idea to give it at least a few hours, preferably overnight, to actually set on the lino so that um, it doesn't clean off. If I were to clean that lino with white spirit as soon as I'd done this transfer drawing, all that carbon would just disappear. It would all just wash off immediately. So there is uh, the finish print. So now you can look at a little bit of the cutting. So here on your left, you can see some of the cutting that I've done in creating this. And um, the, the photos aren't in a particular order. They're just to give you an idea of the kind of work that's involved in making it. So this these are the reduction layers. So I am cutting and printing and cutting and printing. And the colours are going to vary slightly on these photos because half of these, well, the, the ones on the left were taken by me on my phone in the studio and the one on the right is a proper photograph that's colour balanced to the true colours. And you can see how all that grey is done before the tan landscape goes down. So I hope you found that useful. And this is the print with all its details, and I hope you'll be joining me in the studio next time. If you've enjoyed the film, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my films, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.